guys, it's Queen Bija, and in today's video, I'll be reacting right to episodes 3 and 4 of Hana Managatari. So, let's get started at episode 3 and 3, 2, 1, go. That's still stealing, though! She had to do it last night. Seriously? Go lay down, baby. Go. Go lay down. I got you. I know, right? Why? What do you want to do? I hope you're not wanting to play Bub. Okay, Roka. Let's your face. You're fine, babe. Let me see. Okay, you're fine. Uh -uh. Y'all really gonna play basketball? Okay. I'm getting so many flashbacks to when I played it in middle school. God. When you're someone as tall as me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd be forced into it. I mean, she good. She got game, though. But, you know, because of the fact that she only got her arm. 
that's a whole nother story for her. Yeah. Hmm. What do you like? Well, how tall are you? What? <laughs> um, you could, but you're not running away. You could just push her off. No, no, sure. Yeah, maybe you want to be a submissive. Do you think she cares? the fuck? <laughs> Yeah, but she's gonna want it back. She already wants it back now. And we got like two episodes left, not counting this one, but she's gonna get it back. So just give it back to her. Hmm. 
Hmm. So weird to see on somebody else's arm. See, I'm like kind of scared for what if she, what we're gonna see. Is it gonna be ever? It's it's gonna be something. Oh. No, it looks more like a monkey. Like what? <laughs> then what else do you have in your body, girl? rather play with your hands. That makes sense.
Yeah, but probably even hearing that probably depressed you even more. Of course. Yeah, but in a way, it seems like you didn't want it. You didn't fucking need it. Okay. Cody. And what did you say that time? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me.
I mean, well, damn, Roka, you got, like, a fucked up backstory. I mean, shit. Yeah, I get that, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means go ahead. I mean, you're not going to cut off this story and, you know, knowing y'all, y'all going to do that. I mean, whatever it is and how, you know, she met the double. I mean, girl, Roka, what the fuck? I mean, shit, your story is already, like, fucked up and sad, but I feel like it's just gonna about, it's gonna get worse in this next episode. I never would have thought that a girl like her would have a, tra like, somewhat of a bad backstory like that, but typically when you look at almost, like, any character in anime, Sometimes it's easy to tell, and then sometimes it isn't. But with her, I was thinking way, way different. I was way off on that. Especially with the fact is like learning about that. Like, what the fuck? Like, mm -mm. that was too much. But now I just want to know how she met the devil and everything. But I kind of want to skip the ending and just go to the next damn episode. Seriously, like, god dang, I just want to know more. I mean, shit, you never would assume something like, as a person like her, would be all like, like to be like this, but shit, you really just don't know. There's something else I want to say, but I can't think of it. Mm. This airplane, okay. But it's like, to me, this is what I think about her, so, like, especially when she was talking about taking things from people and how it you know it's on her body and everything and shit like that it, it sometimes it reminds me of something you know how i don't know where it's from there was something that i watched but it's like you take maybe the emotion of someone and how they feel and then they can't feel that certain um, emotion or anything anymore i don't know where it was in a tv show maybe an anime or something that i watched I thought it was really weird, but then cool at the same time, because then you're feeling all those emotions that whoever, boy, girl, man, woman, child, whatever, felt those emotions at that time. And it seems like she takes like she takes those things on from the series, but instead of it being emotions, it's more of like the monkey arm, the monkey paw, um, the leg, because like, holy shit, I wasn't expecting her leg to be like that. I thought it was going to be the exact same size of the hand where it barely had hair on it. But no, her fucking, <laughs> it ain't all the way covered. She still got thighs where you can see her thighs and everything, but from like maybe to, but like halfway point almost to her knee is where it starts. But I mean, about halfway of her thigh all the way down to her foot. Girl, mm-mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm. How do you? Ugh. How do you shower it? Oh my god! Uh -uh. 
I can't. Bruh, but if it's, like, if it's sad now, it's gonna be worse in this next episode. I feel like something bad is gonna happen, and it's just gonna be fucking tragic, and I'm just gonna look at this girl, and I'm just gonna be like, do you regret anything of what you did? And she might say no. Because she seems like the type of character who is like, I did it because I was bored, in a way, but then at the same time, like, especially with the basketball, going into the soccer to basketball thing, how she was like, I wanted it to be from easy to normal, in a way, but not too much, but still, it just, I, I felt like she's possibly going to have regrets, but then at the same time, she's gonna be, like, we're gonna get to episode four, and she's just gonna be like, no. I did everything, and I had nothing, no regrets, nothing, no feelings, wouldn't change anything for the world, this is what I wanted, no matter what. And you would think someone as her would possibly want that. It's like how, um, when I was watching last year, um, when I did a reaction on it, uh, Boogie Pop and others, and certain situations that happened did not show. And I did question a lot of things, but a lot of people told me, oh, it's because of this series and this, and it was like going into way too much. And I didn't really have the time to go into like different Boogie Pop series and to literally find out what all transpired and everything because it's just, like, one thing in, like, this big-ass universe. But it seems like that a little bit into this. But, yeah. Go ahead and pause the video, and I will see you guys in one second for episode four. Okay. Episode four in three, two, one, go. Mm, not as weird as you. Mm -hmm. Of course, that would depress anyone. Then. I mean, you could still have a normal life, but it just wouldn't be the same. Mm. 
Yeah, that literally looks exactly like that one. And there's your leg. And I'm guessing her mom didn't like it. You fucking kidding me? Of course. Oh, honestly, I thought she would want to probably kill herself. Of course, is what else could you do? But 
But see, then it also makes me wonder, why couldn't she possibly go see um, Oshino? Wouldn't that be better? Because then she possibly wouldn't have to deal with it, like the way she's going to be doing now. But who knows? He had to live in her life after that. Mm -hmm. God, that looks so fucking weird. She can still stand around and, you know, do everything that she can do with a regular leg and a fucking arm, but... In a weird way, it's kind of like a drug, in a way. I mean, you can't just, like, stop after you have one. You gotta keep going, right? Jesus Christ. Are you fucking serious? Girl, you better take a good look at that hand. That's the last fucking time you're gonna see that arm. Shit. She's gotta get that thing back. There is no way in hell. I mean. It'd be hilarious though. Man. Uh, got him.
Yeah. What do you mean? Why? She dead, isn't she? So then her ghost is just walking around town. Of course. Well, I mean, there is a lot of things that you can hide behind a smile or whatever. God damn, girl, you just running everywhere. So going on. Makes you want to know how the fuck she doing, but no. Agaragi? Holy shit! <laughs> I, I wouldn't... See, you're the type who would get a beetle as a as a guy. Ouch, that that's my dream car shit. That are a really good truck, but yeah, that's amazing. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm Charlie Brown looking ass. <laughs> yeah, but it's Exactly. That's a girl type of car. <laughs> I thought you would be someone who could, like, maybe a truck, convertible, something. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Mm 
Minuten. Complicated. A keychain. Oh my god, this is like a power of girl. You don't have to accept them for what they say. You can just take it, have it come in one ear, not the other. Oh my god, like, bruh, thank you! <laughs> you, oh my 
got my baby boy as a man. Oh my fucking god. I can't. He looks so good though. Oh my god. It, out of all the people, honestly, I was thinking, I was like, the one person that she could possibly talk to, if it wasn't Agarari King, I literally thought it was going to be Best Girl Sandra Hara. Like, mm -hmm. But still. Because I was like, damn, you know, it would be nice to have Sandra Hara, even though she was in the, the second to last season of this show. But it's like, damn, we still want to see her. But it's like, you know, I kind of want to see Agarari because we got to see him only once before hana and then you see him only once in this episode until I, I i got one more episode left and that's why until either this weekend or next week but it was good she needed someone honestly really to just listen to her and to give her advice and i'm glad it was him like i said if it wasn't him it should have been turned hana but still it was nice it's something that she needed i get the fact that she feels lonely without you know her and well, Sanjo Hara and Agarai Yoon. I get that. It's almost like how when you are in high school and you have friends who are in a different grade than you and they graduate and you still have friends who are in the same grade as you, but you still kind of miss those other people who you knew and stuff. And even though that they're gone and you really still don't have that much time with them, even outside of school, because, you know, they're going to college, they have work and you're, you know, they're balancing their schedule to hang out with you. I get that because that happened towards me to me a lot like in my senior year of high school and I had two friends who were both in college or going into work and it was like really it was hard for out of the two one of them to always really um to find a way to schedule her time because not only was she in college and shit like that she was also married and it was just mm, it, it, it got way complicated. And I mean, the saddest thing about it is, and I think I've shared this before, um, she passed away about two years ago. And I miss her every single freaking day, even though we had a falling out. Um, it's just still sad, you know. But to, it, like, I know how she feels, but I'm not surprised about Roka dying. Something about that to me just felt so off. Like, every single time when I saw her, I was like, I kept wondering, I was like, Does, could anybody else possibly see her with the other Roka? Not only with Kambaru, but anybody else. But, like, anyone who wasn't in the situation that any of these people who she um, went and helped, could they possibly see her? And I was thinking, like, probably not. So that's why I wasn't really surprised about the fact is that, oh, psh, she committed suicide. It is sad that she committed suicide and stuff because people do that almost like every single day you never really know but it's just like if you see those signs you could possibly stop it before it gets too late and i'm glad that in episode um three she she went into detail about certain things but not too much but then having um cotton say that she had issues at home and then plus the fact that you know with the basketball team and you know her arm not her arm her leg and not like depressing the shit out of her and like i said that like anything that got to really tragically happened to you like that would depress the shit out of anybody and then you feel like if there's stuff going on at home and everything that you're just like i don't want to live anymore i've never personally felt like that in my life even with the shit that's happened to me in my life whether it's I, well i've never broken an arm and stuff like that but it's really more of family issues and stuff i've had that but still never really wanted to like do that and i because i think there's more to life than trying to um commit suicide and everything and that's why like i try to talk to whether it's mm, friends who are going through a situation like that or even some of my subscribers here who are currently even even now going through it and there's one girl who i've been talking to for about we've been yeah we're friends uh, yeah because she's my subscriber and i consider her a friend so We've been talking for almost a year, no, 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 you know, almost two years now, and she feels so much more in a better space than she was in the first time I talked to her, and I'm really thankful that she is, and so happy for her, but still, bruh, like, I'm happy that he's here, he has longer hair, he looks so damn good, I mean, bruh, I can't, this mm, sexy ass man. <laughs>
<laughs> my weakness, but this boy is driving a Beetle. I, you know, I ain't mad about that. It's a nice car, and it's a car that I would really love to have, but I still kind of wish. I think some of the Beetles are, like, still, like, four-door now. I don't like the ones that are just, like, two doors. I need a four-door. My car that's outside right now, that's a four-door, even though it don't work, and I gotta get it fixed. Um, but still, I'd rather have a four-door, but, I mean, it just depends on Volkswagen and how they do. But yeah, it was a damn good episode. I'm happy that she was able to talk to him because between um, the previous series and this one, I'm like, okay, I know we're focusing on so many other characters, but I miss Aganagi and I miss him so damn much. And I'm like, I wish he was here because even though, like, let's say Senjo Hara was the main focus or Hanekawa or... Mayu or whoever, like, he is relatively the minor character of the show. He gets that much, like, um, character development or screen time as much as sometimes the main character. But with this, like, I love the fact that he was in the second to the last episode because it's just, like, it's about Kamaru. Nothing but her and her past coming back to her. And it just, it was nice. Very, very nice to see him. Thank you. So if you give me the last episode with Sanjo Hada, because maybe because it's been me not that long though. Maybe she could, her hair could grow back again. She looks prettier-ish. I don't know. But I want to see, damn it. Other than that, guys, it is my reaction view towards episodes 3 and 4 of Hane, Hana Hana Managatsuri. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys. Well, since I only really have one episode left um, in this series, and I talked about it in my Simpho Gear Verity, uh, video, I might have episode four come out since next week is Christmas and everything. Um, and I don't want a lot of stuff coming out, even though I still have to have a lot of shit come out next week because stuff is either ending next week or whatever. I might have this show, like, all three of the shows come out a day earlier on Thursday instead of Friday. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, I'll probably have my answer sometime tomorrow, like, either before Fire Force or after I watch Fire Force or, like, later on in the day. Maybe by this weekend. I don't know. But whenever. You'll either see me, um, Patreons will either see me next Thursday or next Friday while everybody else will see me next Monday for the final episode of Hana Monogatari. Bye guys!